So which user did you mean anyway, right? In Power Apps, there's a lot of different ways to get the user. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you four different ways, right? We're going to use the user function. We we'll use Office 365 users. We're going to use a SharePoint person column and the Dataverse users table. We're going to pull all those in and we're going to make sure that you understand the difference between the four and how you can't necessarily use them interchangeably without a little bit of work by kind of connecting some dots. This is something that came up in my training class office hours this week, right? So if you haven't set up, get yourself an office hours, I don't know what you're missing, but someone was having confusion around this connecting the dots and I thought it'd make a good YouTube video. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so here we are on a blank app. I just built nothing there yet. So we can kind of start at the beginning. So if we throw a label on the screen, hopefully you all know, but we have the user function, right? User like that, it returns the email, the full name, and the image. And this information comes from, you know, the current logged in user's profile. It's very nebulous and just kind of stuff that appears, but it's basically your Office 365 user info brought in. So if we do user dot full name, there is their name. Okay, so that's the first user. So the second user is going to require us to add connection, right? So we go here to data and we're going to add data and we're going to search for users. And so we want to add the Office 365 users, right? Because we all have Office 365 users as a connection available. So we add that in. And so then now if you throw a label in your app, you can come up here and you would say something like Office 365 users dot my profile v2. So that's the current logged in users profile. We don't need to select any fields. So we'll just do that. And you do a dot here. And so here's all the properties. And if you look through, one of them is display name. And look at that, we've got the same Shane Young, right? So second way to get people. The third way to get people, go back over here to add data, is if you're using Dataverse, then you're gonna have a Dataverse table called users. This is automatically populated by Dataverse. It's pulled in your information based on people have access to your environment, blah, 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 right? But so these Office 365 users are based on your accounts, but they're a little bit different. So here, if we want to see those or see the current logged in users uh, account or info from that table, we would have to do a lookup. So we'd say lookup from users and we need a way to match or find the logged in user. So typically what you're going to probably do here is say primary email and you're going to say equals that user function from a minute ago, user.email and you do a dot here. And then this one is called full name, right? They're all different. This is why we're having this whole uh, little chat but that would get you the user from there and their full name. Now the fourth one we're gonna do is a little bit different, but it, it's kind of where we're headed, right? So what we're gonna do is we wanna use a SharePoint person field. And so the easiest way to get the SharePoint person object is to go ahead and add us a SharePoint list. So in this case, I wanna add SharePoint. And then I'm going to add any SharePoint list that has a person column. For me, I'm just gonna use employees because it has a manager column that is type person. So we're gonna connect to employees, that brings that into my app. And so this is something you've probably never done, you probably will never do, but I want you to kind of connect some dots here, right? So if you insert a label, what you can do here is we wanna do that same lookup again, but how do you look up against say person field in SharePoint? Well, what you'd have to do is you'd use the choices function. Remember that returns the list of choices for a specific field. So we're gonna say choices, employees, dot manager remembering over here in SharePoint under you know list settings right list settings there is a manager field and it's just a type of person or group right there's nothing there's no shenanigans here there's nothing special if you named it Cal then it would have been Cal right it doesn't matter but that's the field I'm using okay so lookup just wants a table it doesn't care that we use choices to get there and then now you get to say well what do you want we well, want email and so then now you do email equals user like so dot email close that do a dot here and for this one it is going to be email again or sorry we're doing display name it'd be display name now this comes back blank and this might have you going scratch your head like Shane why doesn't that work well if we go look over here at choices all right so highlight it look at the table a you're going to see this is shaped a little bit differently but if we see mine right there notice here that it is Shane with a capital S, capital P, capital A, okay? This particular lookup is case sensitive. If we were to look at user email, it is Shane with a lowercase s. Ew. So for the moment, right, we have 
what we're going to do here is we're going to just type it in manually so we can see that we get the same thing back. We just had to do it. Um, you know what? We're, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it manually. Why not? And so there you can see we've gotten that person object back. Now, the reason we had to hard code this is because it turns out that if we put our friend user back up here, room, that email, right, we had this problem with the lowercase s. So this is one of the first differences that you see. So like if we go back up here, so let's just copy this one. Remember, this is the user function. And so if we put the user function here, we see Shane with a lowercase s. If we put the um, this one, so copy, paste, all right, so this is the Office 365 users. If we change this to be email, nope, it's not email, this one's mail, right? They're all different. That one is going to be Shane with an uppercase. If we copy this one, I believe this one is also a Shane with a uppercase, right? So this one, it's primary email. They're all something different. And then, oh, we guess we need to go back and fix this one. So speaking of fixing this one, what I would do here, so the way that I wrote this, it's not delegable anyway, so we might as well just keep making things as terribly undelegable as possible. Uh, but so we just turned to lower, so that way it would take the logged in user and make it lower. And so if we copy, oh, if we copy this control, control C, control V, and then we change this one to be, this one's email, I believe, yep. Then we get the uppercase. So this is one of the first problems that people run into with this whole user idea, is anywhere that it's case sensitive, sometimes the emails are different. And for the life of me, I honestly can't really figure it out, right? Like, so here, let me show you over in my Azure or my Office 365 user so you can kind of see. Okay, so here I am in Office 365 user admin center. And so I want you to see my username is Shane. So if I say manage username and email, you're gonna see that somehow along the way, my primary email address is Shane with a capital S, but my username is Shane with a lowercase s. So I don't know if this is something that we did, you know, back seven years ago or whenever we set this thing up originally. I don't know if this is something Microsoft changed over time. I, I can't tell you why, but at least I can point and show you that this is why I have two different uh, email addresses here. And basically you can see that, you know, the user function is getting my uh, username's email, whereas the Office 365 users, my profile is getting my actual email. So if you're going to play the match game, right? So like if you're gonna do this, Instead of using the user function, if we had used this function, I think we'd get rid of all the problems, right? Because this one will go in here. Everything still works. If we go back to this one and we can now get rid of this whole lower garbage that we typed in. And now if we replace this email with that one, I believe that this will always match correctly. So that's probably the first trick. If you're having a hard time matching because of cases and other weird oddities, right? Maybe you've got some users it works for, some users it doesn't. This could be one of them, okay? So that's the thing to be cautious about, right? These two can have different email addresses. And the email address, the reason I'm harping on it right now is it is our primary key, right? Like this is how we're gonna connect the dots if we're trying to use different user tables. So like if you're doing a bunch of Dataverse work, right, you need to get the Office, or you need to get the Dataverse user because it's got a different GUID, it's got a whole bunch of different IDs. Like, yes, it's based off of the same human being, but it's got a different setup and a different look about it. And more importantly, it's got a bunch of different fields that if you're doing a Dataverse-based solution, you're gonna to need to do, right? Like, so if we highlight this whole thing, if I can ever highlight it, right, it returns that whole record. And so if we, if we were to look through here, we've got like a system user ID. So this is my actual GUID that is my ID. So this is the object that I would need to use if I was trying to patch a lookup column in Dataverse, or I was trying to reference like the security information, the roles, or you know, the team members, all that weird, crazy Dataverse-y stuff. This is the user I need, and so this is how I get to that user. And so speaking of office hours, right, remember if you sign up at training.powerapps911.com to any of the plans that include office hours, which is basically almost all of them, then once a month you get invited to office hours where you can submit your own questions and get them answered and listen to me answer dozens of other people's questions. It's always a fun interactive experience. We kind of go off on little adventures talking about this. Like the question, one of the questions yesterday, I didn't know the answer, but one of the other students did. So we just kind of have this open dialogue where a bunch of Power Apps enthusiasts discuss Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI questions. So if that sounds like fun to you, then go sign up at training.powerapps911.com for one of the different subscriptions and I'll see you next month in office hours.
The same with SharePoint. So, you know, we now know that this would get the user. I've never had to do this before. I just did it today. But why I want you to see, you know, like a SharePoint user. So if we look at this choices, it's going to show us that our SharePoint person field is a little bit different, right? It's got a claim, a department, a display name, an email, a job title, and a picture. Different. Why that's important? Because what I run into see people end up having problems is if we insert ourselves like a drop down here. And so if I say, hey, drop down, I wanted to get, I want to use Office 365 users and then search users. Search for V2. Is search term required? We're going to set it to false. And then close all this up. And so like that. And then now if we go over here and then do a dot value, that will get us all the users and we'll change this to use their display name. And so if we hit the drop down, right, here's all the different people. And so like if we go find me, and so now if we click on me, and then now, right, we know that that returns my Office 365 users. But what I see people do then is say, okay, well, I want to patch my SharePoint list, right? I, so I want to choose the manager from that list. So then they go right here and they're like, hey, I want to patch employees, defaults, employees, all right, title is a required field. So I say title equals, you know, user test. <laughs> I know, very descriptive. And then for the manager, all right, they're like, hey, I need to put a person in here. I want to set Shane as this person's manager. It's a person field, right? That's a person. That should work. So then they just try to reference that drop down, which is named drop down one. I should have been able to guess that. Drop down one dot selected. They close their curlies. They do this. They get an error message. If you hover, what's the error message? Invalid argument type, expecting a record value, but of a different schema. So it wants a record, but you gave it the wrong type of record. And it starts to help you here. Like your formula is missing a column claims with a type of text. So you didn't play the match game correctly. And so that's what it's angry about. So what could you have done? Well, we could either, you know, go back to here and say, hey, instead of using Office 365 users, right, we could have just, you know, commented that out and instead used our choices, right? So choices from the people column to patch the people column. Look, the error message goes right away because remember, this is spitting out a user in the right format. Whereas this other one, when we were using this to get the user, right, the Office 365 users, it's got all these other different unrelated fields. They are important to Office 365, but they don't make a SharePoint person. You've got to connect the dots. But Shane, I really want to use this, right? All right, let's go back to what you really want to use. So you're using this, it's mad. So what you have to understand then is that manager, it wants a person record. It just doesn't care how you get there, right? So it has to be exactly the right type of record. So it needs to be claims colon. And then we could do drop down one dot selected dot mail. Okay, now it's still mad. But if you hover, it's going to tell you, look, I'm missing a department column. All right. So you just do that. You say department. Well, Shane, what department are they in? I don't care. If you just put a blank here, SharePoint will look it up for you. So you don't have to fill in the department, but you have to have a blank department. You hover. It wants a display name. Same thing. Make sure that you're capitalizing this correctly, right? I did display name capitalized with a capital D and a capital N because that's what it wanted. We hover. It needs an email one. So we'll do email. I believe we'll leave this one blank also. And then it also wants picture, but we'll hover just to show you. Oh, it wants job title. See, I forgot job title. So job title blank. And then it wants, oh, I'll show you. Fine. Hover. It wants picture. And even though a picture is an image type, you can still use picture and there's blank like that. See, look, now it's not mad. And now if we take this and we find Shane again. So then now if we press the button and then we go back over to my SharePoint list, we should have an employee at the bottom called user test. And if we scroll to the right, the manager should be Shane. Ta -da! So this is what I'm after with this lesson, right? Is that there are different types of users and you can get to the login user. You can use another place to reference them, but you need something to connect the dots. And so in most cases, that is going to be the email address. But when you're using the email address, just be careful about that case sensitivity problem we saw at the beginning because that'll get you in trouble, right? But now that you understand like how that would work, so it's the same type of thing. If I wanted to patch a, a Dataverse lookup column that was referencing the user's table, 
I can't pass the Office 365 user. I can't pass the logged in user. I've got to go back to this method to get the Dataverse user from the users table and then save it, right? But let's, let's just add one real quick. So we'll go here to uh, data sources. We'll add a Dataverse table. So we'll do uh, Chewy Tracker. Okay, and so in this one, there is a field called Dog Walker. So if we add ourselves another button and then we go here, we would say patch Chewy Trackers, defaults Chewy Trackers. And then there is a, a primary one called, I believe dog activity is the primary field, I guess required field. So we'll say uh, video demo, I don't know. And so then the dog walker is a person column and we can, let's just go prove this. I guess I'm jumping ahead, making you guys assume too much. We'll go here, we'll go to tables, we'll find Chewy tracker, we'll click on that, we'll go to columns. And so here you can see, you know, I just told you the required field was um, dog's activity. So I get remembered right correctly there. And then dog walker right here is a lookup. And if we click on the lookup, we'll see that it is a lookup to the user's table. Okay. So then here, if we want to make the dog walker a user, but we were using this same drop down again, remember this was, we wanted to use the goofy search user. So we can just go steal this type of thing. So this lookup is most of what we want. Copy, paste that in here. We'll hit enter right here. So it's kind of online. And so here though, instead of looking up the log, the email, we would just say I wanted to use that drop down again, right? So drop down one dot selected dot mail. We would close our patch. Okay. And so now if we press this button. And we go look back over in Dataverse, back to Chewy Tracker. There's video demo just created right now. And look at who the dog walker is, yours truly. So you can connect the dots between these different types of users, but you've got to do it. Email is going to be your most likely key, but you can't use, you know, different types of users directly. You've got to, you've got to go that extra mile. So doing the look up here, or like we did here where we, you know, manually crafted it out, you, right? Because Power Apps just wants what Power Apps wants. It doesn't care how you get there. And so however you shape the exact record it wants, it'll be happy with. Okay, so that's everything I've got for today. I thought you might enjoy this little bit of confusion. I just, when is a user a user, right? Because there's just, there's all these different ways to get users and it's up to you to connect them. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.